Let's go on to some of the more advanced tools. I'm going to select all of the points in the apple. Now, by grabbing any part of the apple, I can drag it around the screen. You'll notice that the old image stays there until I let up. If I let up away from the template, the template gets in the way of the image, and so I will check artwork only to remove the template. By holding the Option key down while clicking the Select item, I can bring up a dialog box that allows me to move a specific distance. Clicking Vertical Move and typing in 72 points, which is exactly an inch, you will notice that the apple will hop one inch up on the screen. This allows for precise horizontal and vertical motion. The Scale tool, the Rotation tool, the Reflection tool and the Shear tool provide basic transformations on the apple. Click an origin and drag, scaling the apple in X and Y. Now here they're being scaled in a non-uniform way. By holding down the Shift key, I can allow the apple to be scaled in a uniform way in both X and Y. This dragging around the apple gives you a great deal of flexibility. The rotation tool, the origin specifies the axis about which you're rotating, the point about which you're rotating. So I drag around and you'll notice the apple will rotate about that point. If I click in the corner here, you'll notice that the apple will rotate about that point. So this is a very flexible tool for rotating either complete objects or parts of objects. Let's zoom in and let's select a portion of the leaf. I use the marquee to get most of the points. I then use the shift button to extend the selection to get the rest of the leaf. Using the rotation tool, I select the base of the leaf as the origin of the rotation. This allows me to wiggle the leaf on its stem. Using the scale tool, I can make the leaf larger or smaller relative to the rest of the apple. This is a very powerful tool for modifying and changing shapes. I'm now going to select the entire apple again. Here, I can specify a specific rotation by holding down the Option key when I press the origin. Now a rotation angle can be typed in, and when I click OK, the apple will rotate precisely 15 degrees. I can undo any operation at any time with the Undo command. The reflection tool is really interesting. I'm going to select the leaf and the stem of the apple. And what I want to do with this reflection tool is create a mirror image of this. In other words, flop it so that the leaf is on the other side. By putting the origin at the base of the stem and clicking, I specify an axis and reflect this leaf and stem around that axis. I can then change it back if I don't like it. By selecting all of the items and using the shear tool, I can establish a base for the shear, another origin, along which you push the apple over as though it's in a windstorm. The model here is by moving back and forth, you can create a slanting effect on any object. Now I'll put some text in the image. Take the text tool and click to find the origin of the text. You select the size of the text by typing 36 points in this case. The letting is the space between baselines of text. I'm clicking center to center the text and I'm typing the word apple in the text block. Here apple now appears below the picture of the apple. I can use any of the transformation tools on the text. The scale tool will change the shape and size of the apple word. The rotation tool, specifying an origin, will allow me to rotate the text about any point. This is a very powerful feature. I can pick up the apple word and move it around the screen to my heart's content. We'll leave the apple slightly below where it was. We can also paint the text any color. I can fill it with white and outline it with black. 
I'll use a half a point again here. Now in artwork mode you can't see it, but in preview mode you can see the text outlined. Going back to artwork only, we can now add other features. I'm going to put a rectangle about the picture of the apple. Normally rectangles go from corner to corner, so if I start another rectangle from the center it's the wrong thing. Holding the option key allows me go to go from center to corner, which gets nice uniform borders. If I preview this, oops, oh, I put those rectangles in front of the apple. What I want to do now is fix that situation. I'll select the rectangles, I'll cut them, and I'll paste them behind everything, paste them in back of the apple. Now when I preview, you can see the apple come up in front of the borders. We've completed our image now, and now I think you have a good appreciation for what the Adobe Illustrator can do.